السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي So we are on the last uh, last session on fulfilled prophecies from the traditions and this is the ninth session and prior to these nine sessions on fulfilled prophecies from ahadith we had two sessions on fulfilled prophecies from the quran and there are a large number of such prophecies that we have gone through over nine sessions and that should drive home the point that we just cannot take the traditions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam lightly as long as they are authentic traditions that's why it's very important to search for authentic traditions i'm not saying the weak hadith uh, should be disregarded totally you know they could as well be true who knows it's just that human beings could not prove them to be authentic they could as well be true but authentic traditions we just cannot disregard them and we disregard them at our own peril very very important extremely important that we uh, give proper regard to traditions we we I mean, there's no scope for saying that oh this is this, this is just a hadith oh my goodness that's a very damaging statement or this is just a sunna if it is authentic we better care for it and that is what all these fulfilled prophecies prove to us now in the previous session i talked about just two of them which are in white an increase in brutality and killing that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophesied and the plunge into immorality and later on i found i did not complete that one I'll complete that and then talk about Muslims becoming easy prey as prophesied and the immor immortality of this ummah. Immortality of this ummah as prophesied and the last one never thought you would speak and this by the way uh in in these traditions under this section prophesizes about modern gadgets now uh, just to recap what we discussed in the previous session as i have been doing uh, every time recapping so let me go over and just go over the parts that are in green so we talked about increase in brutality and killing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said beware of oppression so he asked us to be aware of oppression and greed for greed destroyed those before you it drove them to spill each other's blood and violate each other's sanctities each others meaning muslims killing muslims and violating each other's sanctities and then increase in brutality and killing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said look at the green part killer has no idea why he killed nor the killed knows why he was killed person who is killed does not know why he was killed and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked what's the reason for that he said chaos chaos and then he said the hour will not the hour will not the hour will not come commence until knowledge is
knowledge is removed. He prophesied about earthquakes becoming frequent, about time narrowing, about turmoil surfacing, about anarchy increasing, namely killing, lots of killing, which we are seeing in our times. We are seeing the passing away of time very quickly because of the modern gadgets. We don't realize the passing away of time and knowledge becoming scarce because it does not sink through the hearts of people, even if they know. And then again, the green part it is remarkable how Rasulullah not only described provocative dress of women, but even predicted women's hairstyles. And again, the green part, when that time comes, you will be killing each other. Muslims will be killing each other. Once again, prophecy on that. And again, the green part, Allah will raise from this ummah at the end of every hundred years, one who will revive its religion for it, a mujaddid. And then the next green part, a group of people amongst my followers will remain obedient to Allah's orders until the day of judgment or close to the day of judgment. The group will be there, will always be ready to sacrifice themselves in the obedience of Allah's, Allah's orders. Even if the vast majority of Muslims do not. And then he mentioned about open shamelessness that is in one tradition and in this tradition uh, the translation is fornication which is practiced openly and when that happens then epidemics will become rampant among people which which they had never seen before and with uh, in another tradition it is mentioned that uh, uh, it would be very painful. New forms of epidemics that they have not seen before and very painful. And in yet another tradition, uh, he says the, 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 the last green part that these epidemics would be punishment from Allah Ta'ala, which he inflicts on whomsoever he wishes. And then I mentioned that shameless is not new. And so plagues and pandemics are also not new. And I went over a history of, a uh, brief history of pandemics. The entire history would be very time consuming. And the next point I made is that in the last, uh, or in the current pandemic, the worst affected regions and countries happen to be the ones where the prevalence of open shamelessness is the most. I left out a couple of pages from section 40, the plunge into immorality. So let me finish that and then to 41, 42 and 43. The link between sexual permissiveness and sexually transmitted diseases is not to be denied. And there is a link greater sexual permissiveness, greater sexually transmitted diseases. Perhaps the endless pursuit of sexual gratification without liability behind this, is behind this next prophecy as well. The people pursue sexual gratification and they don't want to take responsibility for that. That means no family. A woman will one day be taken and have her stomach cut open. Have her stomach cut open. Just a minute. My monitor is giving problem. Have her stomach cut open. then what is inside her womb 
will be taken and discarded. Abortion, cut of fear of having children. Abortion becoming rampant. According to an extensive survey published in Guttmacher Institute Journal, the fear of dramatic life changes is by far the most common reason for abortions today, with more than half of those surveyed citing single motherhood as the reason for that fear. Finally, Abdullah bin Amr anhu, narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the hour will not commence until people mate in the streets like donkeys mate. And Abdullah bin Amr asked, will that really happen? He said, sallallahu alayhi wa yes, it most certainly will happen. Without any reservation, he's saying that. Muslim Ibn Habban al-Hakim. Though this was stated as one of the last signs before the Day of Judgment following major apocalyptic events, many of our modern cultures are clearly moving towards that degree of shamelessness, if not experiencing it already. Just the other day, there was a news item that in New York City, in a subway, a man assaulted a woman sexually, and there were other people in that, uh, in, in, in that, uh, what do you call that, bogey. Nobody intervened. Nobody tried to help the woman. And this happens even today, though even though this is supposed to be a sign uh, following major events before the Day of Judgment, it has started to happen. People mating in the streets like donkeys or dogs. Muslims becoming easy prey. So we have finished uh, the plunge into immorality. I left out two parts in the last session. Muslims becoming easy prey. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa also prophesied that carnal pursuits would not only infect his nation, but would be the cause of their downfall and devastation. Tawban radiallahu anhu reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the nations will soon invite one another to devour you, to eat you up, just as diners are invited to a dish. Come and eat, come and eat. So people will be inviting others, non-Muslims, to devour the Muslims. Somebody asked, will it be because of our small number on that day? And Rasulullah said, no, rather you will be many on that day. But you will be weightless foam, like the foam on the river or the foam in the seas or oceans. Muslims will be numerous like the forms. And Allah will remove the fear of you from the hearts of your enemies and will cast weakness into your hearts. Someone said, Ya Rasulullah, what will this weakness be? Or what is the reason for the weakness? Let me go back again. Allah will cast weakness into your hearts. Somebody asked, what will this weakness be? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the love of this world and the hatred of death. Love of this world and the hatred of death.
the extent of our Iman we can gauge through these two measures. How much of love of dunya is there in our heart and hatred of death is there in, in, in our heart. And when I look at my heart based on these two yardsticks, just these two yardsticks, there are so many other yardsticks, I don't feel encouraged at all. To a bigger or smaller degree, we suffer from this malady, Muslims all around. Therefore, you know, ambition, which leads to love of the world. I have to be this, I have to be that. And that ambition takes us in a path. Entire life's journey spent in acquiring worldly possessions that will not go with us. And when time is over, we haven't acquired possessions that will go with us or haven't acquired adequately for the eternal journey. And because of the love of the world, we do not like death. Death is something that will take us to Allah Ta'ala, who is better than our worldly relatives, whether it is parents or wives or children. Allah is better than that. As Ismail alayhi salam told Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Ismail alayhi salam was told that he has to be sacrificed, Ismail alayhi salam said, carry out the order of Allah. You will find me an obedient son. Then he said, Allah is better than you. And the akhirah is better than dunya. That is the sign of a believer. He craves to meet his Lord. He loves to meet his Lord. And that is what people who have, who established relationship with Allah Ta'ala, that is what they said when it was time for their death. I was waiting for you, O Malakul Maut. Slowly over time, in the last few centuries, Muslims one by one left their major responsibility, Amr bil Maruf, wa Nahya nil Munkar, this greatly affected their Iman. It's a direct connection between Dawat and Iman. The more we invite, the stronger is our Iman. The direct connection. One has to practice on that, give Dawat and then feel how the Iman gets affected. This greatly affected their Iman, which in turn affected their Amal. Iman is weak, Amal is weak, which in turn immersed them in larger and larger num numbers in major sinful activities, more and more Muslims. <clears throat> this happened in the last few centuries. With some exceptions, some exceptions are always there. You know, people who have been able to keep their Iman, even though it was hot like charcoal, keeping charcoal in the hand, which in turn brought more and more division, dissension, and destruction. Erosion of Iman is at the root of Muslim decay and domination. We have fallen from the label of true believers. So lose not heart, nor fall into despair, do not grieve and do not be despaired, for you only shall dominate if you are true believers. Allah Ta'ala is saying, you will dominate if you are true believers. But we are not dominating. We are being dominated. Muslim blood is cheaper than water. What does that say? Allah Ta'ala cannot, cannot be untrue. He's saying, you only shall dominate if you are true believers. We are not dominating. What does that imply? We do not fall in the category of true believers. 
it's very plain and simple. No rocket science here. And then Allah Ta'ala says in another verse, وَلِلَّهِ الْإِزَّةِ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And to Allah belongs all honor and to his messenger and to the believers. Honor belongs to Allah, to his messenger and to the believers. Are we honorable today? We do the, we do the worst of crimes. I, I mentioned earlier, a Muslim scholar in the USA, professor, he carried out a survey of uh, the major countries in terms of possession and practice of beautiful character. Let me put it that way. Not Salat, not fasting, not Hajj. Beautiful character. Or outward dealings. And as per him, he did not find any Muslim country within the first 35. The first Muslim country ranks 36, 36th. In terms of the prophetic qualities, 35 non Muslim or uh, Muslim non Muslim majority countries have better akhlaq than us. And honor goes with that akhlaq. We pray. In our, in our homes, nobody sees. Or in the masjid, we fast, nobody sees. That has nothing to do with interpersonal dealings. What has to do with interpersonal dealings, interpersonal skills, that brings honor, that brings respect in the minds of people. And no Muslim country is there in the first 35. And then Allah Ta'ala says, وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It is incumbent upon us to save believers, to help believers. And there's a similar verse. This is uh, Surah number 10, verse 103, and Surah number 30, verse 37, has nearly identical meaning. To help believers is ever incumbent upon us. You don't get Allah's help. What is the reason? Allah says it is incumbent upon him to help believers. Continuation of Muslims becoming easy prey, reinforcing the point in the previous ahadith, uh, hadith, Anas radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, once my nation considers five things permissible, then destruction will befall them. Has to happen. When cursing one another appears, which we do, Wine is drunk, which some Muslims do. If not wine, then drugs. Silk is worn by men. Musical instruments are played, very common. And men suffice themselves with men and women suffice themselves with women. Certainly Muslims today are not insulated from the ideologies demanding the acceptance of same-sex acts in the world around them. Others are doing it, so Muslims fall prey to that. This is even imaginable for a practicing masjid-going Muslim if they allow their re religiosity to be reduced to a cultural identity. As Rasulullah sallallahu in a hadith narrated by Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu anhu said, an age will surely come when people gather and pray in the masajid, plural for masjid, while there is not a single believer amongst them. 
not a single believer amongst them. We cannot divine the hearts of people. But if we go to the masajid, while, they're, while people are praying sunnah and nawafil, you'll find them looking, while praying, looking here and there. So what can you conclude about their iman? Not a single Muslim believer. There are some exceptions, you know. Always there are some exceptions, but uh, this is something that possibly will be much more prevalent, prevalent as time goes by. The immortality of this Ummah, Rasulullah said, there will never cease to be a group from my nation victorious upon the truth, firm upon the truth, unharmed by those who will oppose them until Allah's decree comes to pass while they are like that. So there'll always be a group of people on truth. Despite the corruption and moral degradation, true believers will endure, even if their challenge amounts to holding onto a burning charcoal or coal. There will be people who value their faith over their lives, and hence Rasulullah further described them by saying, the hour will not commence until a man passes by the grave of his brother and says, I wish I were in his place. It will be such a difficult time that a man will wish he was in the grave rather than alive because while alive he has to struggle against such hardship that it is difficult to hold on to Iman as it is difficult to hold on to burning, burning charcoal. Ibn Battal, a scholar, explains that this will not be due to any suicidal tendency, but rather an anxiety that the prevalent evils and the strength of their adversaries of the Muslims may cost them their religion. And then this is the last section. Never thought you would speak. Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, Razi'Allahu who reports that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, by the one in whose hand is my soul, the hour will not commence until predators speak to people. Predators meaning uh, those who are dangerous. Like uh, as in this case uh, uh, that I will speak, uh, for example, dogs uh, will speak to people. The meaning, in other words, dogs will speak to people, if I say in simple terms. And until the tip of man's whip and the straps on his sandals speak to him, and his thigh informs him of what occurred with his family after he left. As is from Ahmed ibn Hanbal. One can only assume how, how difficult these statements were for a seventh century desert dweller to process, but the astronomical strides in electricity and electronics in the last hundred years have now delivered us to these developments. In time's best inventions of 2002, a Japanese toy maker is showcased for creating a dog translator. Dog translator. If you put it on the dog, it will translate what, what the dog is trying to convey through its barking, a device on its collar that interprets its yelps, growls, and whines into phrases such as, I can't stand it, how boring, and I am lonely. So this is a fulfillment, or we can say this is a fulfillment of predators speaking to people. In November of 2006, the New York Times published an article entitled, Those Shoes Are Made for Talking, hailing in a new age of futuristic sports training. Straps on his sandals speak to him, fulfillment of that prophecy. In January of 2010, a security camera app was released, which transformed the smartphones on our hips in our pockets, into windows, into our homes. And it is fulfillment of the prophecy 
that the Thai informs him of what occurred with his family after he left. You know, nowadays gadgets are available. You install them in your homes. And while you are away, you can see through your cell phone what's happening in your home. Perhaps these are what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intended. Perhaps other phenomena which we have yet to experience. And then um, something that I was hearing in a, in a, um, from, uh, from a scholar uh, which uh, is posted in YouTube. And uh, the scholar was mentioning about various signs of the Day of Judgment. And we, we yet have to have to talk about the various other signs of the Day of Judgment, a large number of other signs. And in that, uh, he mentioned that there is a hadith in which Rasulullah is reported to have said that people will walk with music in their head Nobody could understand in those times what that meant. But now we can see that that possibly meant the headphone. People putting headphones uh, on their ears, but the head headphone goes all around the head and uh, it uh, uh, blares music into their ears. Conclusion, we will settle for this set of verified prophecies of Allah's final Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Although Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described so many signs of the end times, he never specified an exact date or time. Rather, he would on multiple occasions recite, tell people something like, and these are verses from, uh, the, these are verses from the Quran. He would tell people, say, O Muhammad, None, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. None in the heavens and the earth knows the unseen except Allah, and they do not perceive when they will be resurrected. So when people would ask, he would say, "Allah knows best." Some might argue that this too constitutes another prophecy, namely that every prediction about the final hour, which countless people have made throughout history will be mistaken because only Allah knows. The staggering number of these fulfilled prophecies that we ourselves could never have predicted 50 years ago are amazing. Given the number and precision of these prophecies, they must be seen for what they are. Irrefutable proofs of his Nabua. How many we have gone, uh, gone over? A countless number. And uh, yesterday I thought that uh, we have spent, including today's session, nine sessions, 43 sections. In each section, there are multiple prophecies in, in many of them or some of them. So there are a large number of prophecies. And perhaps I should spend the next session in, in going over the highlights of what we have gone over in the previous nine sessions so that we can uh, see all of them in one session. We started uh, nine sessions ago, so that is more than two months or nearly two months. And uh, we don't uh, remember many of them. And so the cumulative effect is not created unless we see the major prof fulfilled prophecies in one session. And uh, perhaps I will do that in the next session, summarize a, a sort of summary, which is very difficult, but uh, I'll try my best by taking the major highlights. And, and uh, these are irrefutable proofs of the Nabu of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fulfillment of the prophecies also convey to us that we have to accord the fullest regard to authentic traditions, something that I started with, painfully collected and meticulously verified by personalities of the highest integrity and intellect. We disregard or downplay these traditions 
to our own peril. And we cannot name all those personalities. There are so many of them, like Imam Bukhari, like Imam Muslim, like Imam Tirmizi, like Imam Ibn Majah, like Imam uh, Nasai, like Imam Abu Daud, Ahmed Ibn Hanbal. So six plus another three who are considered to be uh, reliable. Uh, they have painstakingly and meticulously uh, verified the authenticity of the hadith. So um, we come to the dua part. Topu requests that we include in our dua Uh, Amin Amin Islam Shoikot, I think he will have to undergo surgery or has undergone surgery, one of the two he was mentioning in the beginning. And the wife of Farooq Ahmed. Uh, and uh, then he requests that we pray, as we did last week, for the father in law of Major Mahboob from 15th batch, all from 15th batch. Oh my goodness. Uh, Brigadier General Jahangir, uh, who is uh, regular in giving us company, and his wife are sick. And Jahangir is here today. May Allah Ta'ala, quite a number of brothers from the fifth batch, may Allah Ta'ala round them, Shifa, protect them, bless them shower mercy on them. And uh, grant them speedy recovery. Uh, there are some few brothers who are affected by, I, I'm sure it's, a, it's a quite a large number because the number of affected brothers in, actually affected people in USA is very large. Uh, about 500,000 to 550,000 every day. So that's a very large number. And so some of our brothers are affected like Abdurrahman from Abid from 17 batch, Jihad uh, 17 batch, he lives in Los Angeles. Habib 20th batch lives uh, in New York. Sadat lives in New York 21st batch. Saif also tested positive, but he doesn't have any outward uh, manifestation of COVID. Also his wife and son, Ehsan, are positive. So, uh, and also the families of some of the brothers that I just now mentioned, Abid, Jihad, Habib, Sadat, family members are also affected, but they are not in serious condition, uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, but we pray that Allah Ta'ala uh, keeps them on the safer side. And uh, we pray for Abir's father. I never mentioned Abir's father. He's very regular in attending. His father is undergoing uh, uh, kidney dialysis for, uh, for a number of months, at least a year maybe, maybe two. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala protect him and bless him. And uh, we pray for Rashid of sixth batch who will undergo surgery uh, sometime this month. We pray for the mother of Firoz Siddiqui of 16th batch who is in pretty serious condition after her cancer treatment and other problems. We pray for the father of Zakaria 47 batch who attends our, our halakha. Uh, he's undergoing dialysis. And uh, as a result, you know, there are other complications that arise. And our uh, regular uh, uh, prayer, prayer list goes like this, Amir Hussain, uh, may Allah grant him shifa and all the other brothers and sister 
that I will mention, or sisters that I will mention, may Allah ta'ala grant them shifa. Mrs. Maskura Ayub, wife of Lutfi Ayub from second batch. Captain Shamsu Zaman is uh, struggling with cancer and its treatment and side effects. Uh, it has metastasized, spread through the body, started in the stomach. And he underwent chemotherapy. He writes that the tumor has reduced. He went to Bombay and uh, that's what the doctors told him. He came back to continue with his treatment. Abul Barkat, who is in life support still in uh, Nevada. Uh, Mrs. Mahfouz Reza, whose cancer has metastasized we pray for him. Doctors are not hopeful about her. Nuri Alam Siddiqui will have to undergo some uh, diagnostic tests. We pray for Romel. Allah Ta'ala may grant him complete shifa. We pray for the father of Saif, 19 batch, whose father-in-law is struggling with cancer. And we pray for Jahangir who is undergoing kidney problem from 24th batch, wife of him Rose, undergoing breast cancer treatment. Mrs. Habibullah, our English teacher, Mr. Habibullah, his wife has been released from CMH, but she needs our dua. And Amirul Faisal from 19th batch, suffering from the effect of second stroke for the last uh, maybe six years or so. Assalamu alaikum, we'll meet on Sunday. So I request all brothers to spend a little time with uh, Tawheed. We'll go over uh, Imam Nabavi's 40 Ahadith. I think today he will discuss Hadith number 16. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As-salatu wa-salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal-musaleen. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Rabbi yassir wa la tuassir tammin min khayr. Rabbi sidni ilma. Allahumma inni asaluka ilma nafiya. So, Bismillah. As-salamu alaikum to everybody. Today we continue our hadith study and we start hadith number 16 of Imam Nabibi. So hadith number 16 is a very simple, very short hadith, but with a huge impact. With a huge impact. This hadith is also known as uh, hadith of anger, hadith of anger. This is part of the four hadith that most of our good actions move about. So there are, we mentioned before there are four hadiths that uh, controls most of our good action. So this is this hadith is one of them. Yeah, so let me read the hadith in Arabic first, then we'll go to English, English translation and later on some explanation, some useful knowledge we'll derive, we will get from this hadith. So the hadith goes like this. An Abi Huraira radiallahu an call. Anna Rajulan kola li nabi id sallallahu alayhi wa sallam awsini kola la takdib faraddada mirara kola la takdib so that is the uh, total hadith very short if we translate it in english then it becomes uh, abu huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that a man Say to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, advise me. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised him, do not become angry. And repeated it several times. Actually, the man repeated the question several times. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every time mentioned, do not become angry. This hadith has been narrated in both Bukhari and Muslim with a Sahih status. Uh, yeah. 
So this is the main hadith. This hadith is, we can see that, what is why the name of the hadith is the hadith of anger. It's talking about just the anger of a human being. And if we ponder on this hadith, we can imagine how much goodness can be brought in or how much harm can be avoided by following this hadith. If we if we think we will see that most of our most of our uh, 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 what to say most of our disaster come through anger, right? So sometimes in like uh, like enmity, all this come through anger. The act is during the time of anger. So we learn try to learn a bit more. From this no cat. Okay, let us look at the first important point that this hadith mentioned. The first thing that mentioned the hadith is that a man came and asked Rasulullah advise me. So seeking advice. Seeking advice is one of the important characteristics of Sahaba radiallahu anhu. And we should also stick to it. It's a very good habit, and whenever we meet someone knowledgeable, we should ask. We should ask a solution from him for any issues, any problems, and even if nothing, a general advice is very advisable. So, it, it is a very good habit. It is a very good habit, and in the Quran, it is mentioned that remind because reminder benefits believers. So all believers are in need of need to be reminded. So this is the first wisdom we get from this hadith. The second wisdom is talking about la takdab. La takdab is don't do not become angry. Actually, it doesn't mean what it says. It doesn't mean that you do not become angry because anger and many other things these are all uh, uh, a part of human being it's a defense mechanism it's a defense mechanism we can we can see that anger greed attraction to opposite sex these are all part of a uh, defense mechanism anger usually anger is a help you to achieve something which you normally cannot achieve during anger, you have some uh, extra capability uh, due to some physical changes, which you normally cannot do. Greed. Greed is something that no, uh, uh, makes human being uh, disobey Allah. You see? So when human being disobey Allah, it is because of the greed. So greed is actually is directly related to our free will. Without greed, we do not have free will. And then talking about attraction to opposite sex. Attraction to opposite sex is a, is a main pillar of our family. And Islam starts from family. But again, there's a midpoint. There's a midpoint in all these cases. So if we stay on the left, we are safe. If we stay on the, if we overshoot on the right, all these different mechanisms will cause harm. It's called, will, will cause harm. So we have to understand that, that it is not, although the hadith say la takta, but it doesn't mean that you don't get angry, but it actually means that you do not execute do not execute your anger or do not act by anger. Do not act by anger. That is what the real meaning is. Okay, there's an interesting thing that I should mention here. Actually, it's not a part of this discussion that I just read a few days before that. Uh, you know the Turkish, uh, Turkish scholar Sayyid uh, Nursi, Sayyid Nursi, very famous scholar. I was uh, listening to one of his lecture a few years back. So he said, he said, all human beings, all human beings are sick because of this, this anger, greed, attraction to opposite sex. These are like a bacteria. It helps you in certain time and it harms you at certain time. 
So we, when it harms you, the bacteria is inside us, bacteria is inside us. So you have to control this bacteria all the time. So how we do that? We need some medicine. We need some medicine. So like for hypertension, we every day we take medicine. For diabetes, to control diabetes, every day we take medicine. To control anger, greed, attraction to our opposite sex, also we need to take medicine. And this medicine, according to uh, scholar Sayyid Nursi, it is the ibadah. That every day we do ibadah, every day we pray salah, we give jakat, we sadaka, or whatever uh, ibadah we do, is actually is a prescription by Allah against these viruses. That is that, uh, the, he mentioned very nicely that, the, why, why should we do ibadah every day? So he said, <coughs> to control all this defense mechanism, don't go to the state that it harms us. All right, so I think that's a very, uh, a very uh, interesting way of discussing how, why we should do Ibadah every day. That's why I just, I just added up in this hadith. Okay, let's look in this hadith again. Uh, so why, why uh, we should avoid uh, acting on when angry or we should, we should uh, Avoid any action when you are angry. Why is it like that? So there are a few things. Let's talk about five sifa of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These five uh, characteristics of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is very intrinsic. His very own. It's a very, uh, very uh, long lasting. We say, we say sifa musabba. Musabba is a, something like a permanent sifa. It doesn't change. So these sifa are. Uh, First thing, he is a truthful, truthful. Second is Amana, he is trustworthy. Third is Halim. Halim can be, Halim can be described, described as gentle, mild, and yeah, gentle, mild, forbearing, and so on. That is, he is slow to anger, slow to anger. Fourth is Tawadu, Tawadu is humble. Fifth is Haya, Haya is shy, shyness. Shyness. So, out of this five sifa, this halim is related to this uh, anger directly. Directly, halim can be halim can be described as just I say that uh, it can be described as gentleness, forbearing, mild, patient. All this, uh, all this type of uh, sifa. And it is just opposite to anger. So anger is a anger is made of fire. Scholars say, scholars say, as anger is made of fire, and iblis shaitan is also made of fire. So anger and shaitan is directly related. So so being angry will always lead to situation that is harmful. That is harmful. Okay. So let us talk about, uh, uh, go back to the sifat again, the sifat of Rasulullah of Halim, Halim. So there are a few hadith that I should mention here. One of the hadith is from Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik, you know, he came to Rasulullah at the age of 10 years and he served Rasulullah as his servant for the rest of his life, rest of Rasulullah's life. So he served Rasulullah 10 years as a uh, servant and he gives shahada, he gives shahada that Rasulullah never even talked to him with a raised voice. So not, 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 nothing to talk about angry, he even raised his voice in this whole 10 years. This is how Rasulullah, the sifat of Rasulullah There is another hadith from Aisha radiallahu anhu, and the hadith from Aisha radiallahu anhu. That okay, exactly the hadith is not written here. Let me just uh, summarize the hadith that 
the hadith mentioned about that Rasulullah never uh, become angry with any of his uh, wife in the matter, in the personal matter, in the personal matter. But he can get angry if it's something related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, but not with the personal matter. All right. So we go to the hadith uh, main point now. Mm. Hazrat Aisha said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never get angry for his own sake or and he get angry for the sake of Allah. Okay, Hassan, Hassan al-Basri, Hassan al-Basri was a Tabi'in, Tabi'in from uh, uh, Baghdad. Yeah, so uh, he mentioned, he mentioned that four characteristics, if one possesses, Allah will protect him from shaitan and from hellfire. So what are the four characteristics? We should know because we want to save from shaitan and hellfire. The one who control himself while he is in the state of craving, fear, lash and angry so if we can control ourselves under this poor situation uh, allah will save us from shaitan and help us so allah will help us very important allah will help us means we should we will be definitely will be successful so craving is something that when we see something that other have and we also wish to have it that is craving it could it could uh, result in hasab Fear, fear, under fear, human being, a human body becomes shut down. So, so under fear, if you can control that, and uh, then Allah will help you. Like people in front of Pharaoh, when people go in front of Pharaoh, they are so fearful that they don't protest. Whatever Pharaoh say, they just agree, they just follow. So that is a situation, example of fear. Lashing. Okay, very interesting. Uh, I say is a very important thing in our present society because our present society is a is a is a free mixing society. People interact with opposite sex uh, normally, and even our society is actually moving towards a gender free society. Now we are talking about we are talking the modern people are talking about a society that is free of gender, no gender. So this is a very dangerous situation. And uh, lash can uh, very easily overtake us. We can fall in a prey of Iblis. And the last one is anger. Anger, we are talking in this hadith about the anger. So total is a four situation. If we control ourselves, Allah will help us and protect us from shaitan and hellfire. Okay, so let's look at few of the action, few of the action that we should do when we see angry, when we feel angry. So, so one of the characteristics of anger, when we get angry, when we get angry, we'll see that we usually uh, stand up. We usually stand up. We cannot sit down anymore. We start walking. We start moving. Our eyes become red. Our vein, our vein become swollen. So these are the physical changes. And if we use this anger in, in good way, one of the example is a battle of Khaybar. If we remember the uh, Siddhat of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In battle of Khaybar, Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu was uh, in a snatch at a door of the fort, fort and use it as a protection. This fort, Muslim tried for every day, for many consecutive days, I couldn't win. And because of this anger, the power came to uh, Hazrat Ali Anhu in such a fierce manner that 
he stashed the door out of the place and take it with him. He was a small man. So this is a good example how anger uh, works as a defense mechanism in the time of need. In the time of need. Okay. So let's look into some of the uh, some of the action that we should do. Okay. There are five things that is prescribed when you feel angry to control the anger. So these five things is first is read Aujubillahi bin Shaitani Rajim. So this is the first thing is mentioned, uh, mentioned by scholars to recite Aujubillahi bin Shaitani Rajim. The second is whoever become angry should remain silent. By this we avoid the slander, divorce and quarrel and all this and fighting, all these things we can avoid very easily if we remain silent when we when you feel that we are, we become angry. Third, whoever of you are angry, let him sit down. So if it continues, let him lie down. So during anger, usually people stand up. He, people usually, uh, the tendency of an angry man is to go higher. So we have to do opposite to control the anger. We have to uh, First, try to sit down and then, if not possible, if still continues, lie down. Okay, four. Shaitan initiate anger and it is made of fire. And we can cool down the fire with the water. So, whenever we are angry, make uzu. So, this is one of the suggestions by uh, scholars. When you feel angry, you take water and make uzu. So water will cool down the fire. Five. Knowing the harm that anger can bring, be aware, actually be aware of the harm that the anger can cause. So this is one of the way to control anger. Be aware of the harm that anger can cause and the goodness that con the control of anger can bring. So this is the fifth uh, procedure. Let us look at the characteristics of muttaqeen. Muttaqeen, eh, mut usually, what is the, of course, all Muslims, they pray, they give some jaka, they do hajj, they do siyam in Ramadan. But what is the special characteristics of muttaqeen? So usually they, they will give sadaqa in the time of adversity and in the time of prosperity. And they will strive for goodness and excellence all the time. So this is one of the very important things that we should always do. That we, we never think that we have learned it. We have already reached a standard and that's enough. This, is, this will uh, actually yeah, harm us. This will harm us. We have to strive for goodness and excellence all the way. No way to stop. And all muttaqoon, they make dua for others. So we have to also make a habit of uh, making dua for others. Inshallah, we are doing that with Hamid, Abdul Hamid Bhai, and we will continue to do that. So, Next one is, let's try to do following things. Let's try to do following things. Do all that is taught to control the anger. So we have to try uh, every way to control the anger. Not only this five way, but there might be some other way, like uh, like somebody, somebody when he get angry, what he do is he get out of the house and disappear for one hour. Okay, this is another way. Of, get, uh, of cooling down anger. So let's try. Do not act in the state of anger. And this is mentioned in Quran Surah Araf, uh, verse 154. A person should get angry altogether. The question is 
Is it haram to get angry? Is it haram to get angry? Actually, we addressed this question at the beginning that it's not haram to get angry because anger is a defense mechanism. It's not haram to get angry, but it is haram to act upon anger. So anger is a characteristic of shaitan. Anger is a characteristic of shaitan. So some of the colors mentioned, we shouldn't have the characteristics of shaitan. So in that way, if we see, we can say that getting uh, angry is uh, is not permissible, permissible. But most of the scholars say no, it is not like that. You can get angry, but do not act while you are angry. What is haram is acting upon anger. So more or less, this is the total story of this hadith. So I'll stop here and open the uh, open the stage for questioning. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi ashadu Allah ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiru ka wa tuhu ilaik. Just to supplement to what you said, I remembered a hadith and I uh, went to bring <clears throat> bring the book so I can read the exact hadith related to anger. It says it's from Anas ibn Malik. Uh, 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 yeah. Is from Muad Rasulullah Anhu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "He who restrains his anger while in a position to give vent to it, and within bracket, and does not punish the instigator, Allah will call him on the day of resurrection in front of all his creations, and let him pick a hur hurul yeah. ayin, hurul ayin, beautiful yeah. maiden of Jannah." With large eyes of his choice. Yeah, okay. Habibah, actually, this hadith actually I also noted here, but I didn't mention. I didn't mention, and uh, one of the characteristics is this: had this this gift will be given wherever you uh, do you control the anger. Whenever you do the same action, but it doesn't mean that whole life you do and you get one one uh, reward. It's no. Every time you do that, every time you get a reward. Every time you do that, every time you get a reward. That is beautiful. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and another one, I just want to add that uh, uh, who asked? One Sahabi asked. Uh, oh, oh. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Musa ibn Ha. Musa alayhi salam asked Allah Taala, Oh my Rabb, who is the most respectable slave in your esteem? Allah the Almighty, the Majestic replied, he who forgives despite having a capability to avenge it. In other words, restrains his anger. Okay, anybody yes. else uh, with question or comments? Assalamu alaikum, bhai. Wa alaikum assalam. So, can have an a related al um, yeah, 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 nice so, so actually, actual what you say, Shurkuri and obey Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you may obtain mercy and march forth in the way which leads to at a bracket uh, forgiveness from your Lord and for paradise as wide as are the heavens and the earth prepared for the al muttaqun and then it talks about al muttaqun kara ebong sei al muttaqun hocche those who spend and then oita abar bracket er ki in allah's cause deeds of charity arms etc in prosperity and in in adversity who repress anger and who pardon man verily allah uh, loves uh, al muhsinin kintu এখানে একটা জিনিস হচ্ছে যে দেখেন যে এইখানে কিন্তু এইটা আল্লাহ বলেননি যে স্পেন্ড অনলি when you have uh, the means to do it যখন মিন্স আছে তখন ইউ গিভ আ থাউজেন্ড যখন মিন নাই গিভ ওয়ান ওয়ান ডলার ইফ দ্যাটস অল ইউ ক্যান ইউ নো গিভ দ্যাট রাইট 
কারণ Every single human being except for the prophets commit sin. Some commit more serious ones, some commit, you know, uh, smaller ones, but everybody make, you know, make mistake and, and commit sin. And at, at, at a minimum, we don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough. Tar karan judi amra chinta kuri, jera ko mai akta lecture shun chila, mai tata kol chilan je, when Eight no amra, but, but, but do we really uh, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of these? We, we don't. So, fale, at a minimum, you know, there are those, maybe they are able to avoid every major and minor sin. But this is the way to avoid it. It's to actually be able to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough um, for, uh, you know, what um, he is giving us. তার মানে even if you commit sins as long as you right after you have committed a sin you turn mm. and seek forgiveness true maafir upar thakta hobe sob shomoy maaf chawar upar sujha thank you very much for the contribution ekta jinish tumi khub bolla je shukur adai kora ei jinish ta ei ami feel kori beshi ebong amra sob shomoy shukur adai korar jonno ei jonno kichu kichu dua ache খুব এই দোয়াগুলো খুব ইয়ে মানে খুব সূক্ষ্ম চিন্তা করে দোয়াগুলো করছিলেন কিছু দোয়া গেছে এখানে ওই শুকুর গুলোকে খুব সুন্দর করে বলা আছে আমরা যদি নিজেরা বানিয়ে বলতে পারি তাহলে তো ভালো না হলে পরে এই ধরনের কিছু দোয়া মুখস্ত করে ফেললে যেমন হামিদ ভাই কিছু দোয়া করেন সুবানা <laughs> আল্লাহ রব রব্বানা আউযু বিক 
كلمات لا تامت من غضب وإكاب ومن شر عباد ومن همزات الشياطين يهترون اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الجهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء والسوء القضاء والشماتات الأداء اللهم إني أعوذ بك من زوال نعمتك وتحول عافيتك وفجاة نعمتك وجميع سختك اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الهم والحزن وأعوذ بك من العجز والكسل وأعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل وأعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وكثر الرجال ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وزرياتنا كرة عيوني وجعلنا للمتكين إماما رب جعلني مكيم الصلاة ومن زريتي ربنا تقبل دعاء اللهم اغفر لي ولوالدنا وجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الله يأي منهم والأموات إنك موجب الدعوات برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم أسألك من خير ما سألك منه النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استغزاك منه النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت المستان وليك البلاء ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الله الله يا پروردگار يا فاتر السماوات والأرض أنت ولي في الدنيا والآخرة والله तुम ही जाके छो, अमादेर के अमूल का रत्तू फिक दिए छो, व्यक्तिगत तो भावे एवं शमुष्टिगत तो भावे जाके छो, अमूल का रत्तू फिक दिए छो, बाला रोशना रत्तू फिक दिए छो, पर भूल भ्रांति शंक्षुधन करे, तुम्हार शाही दरबारे कबूल करे नियो अल्लाह, एवं तार बुझ अमादेर के दियो अल्लाह, एवं त एवं तार सवाब पूछे दियो, हमादेर आपून जोन, प्रियो जोन, निकोड जोन जारा कबूरे शाही तो, करो स्त्री जो दी कबूरे था के, करो शामी जो दी कबूरे था के, करो पिता माता, दादा दादी, नाना नानी जो दी कबूरे था के, करो चाचा चाची, फूपा फूपू, खाला खालू, मामा मामी अत्योशाजन बंधु बंधु अब शिक्षक शिक्षक त्रि पारा प्रतिबेशी आमदर बंधु बंधु अब जरा कबूरे तादर का सब पहुँच दियो अल्लाह तादर कबूर के कबूरे आज अब माफ करे दियो कबूर के प्रशस्त करे दियो नूर दिए परिपूर्ण करे दियो कबूर के जन्नत और फिर दो सर बागान बनिए दियो तादर दौरोजामुचु करे दियो अधिके निश्चिंत मने रेखो शे कुठीन दिने अल्लाह बिद्दू तेर गोदी ते पुलसे रात पार करे दियो पीना हिशा भी जन्नत और फिर दोसे दाखिल करे दियो अल्लाह अम्रा तो गोनाई भरपूर अल्लाह माथा थे के पाप और जंतु आमदेर गोनाई भरा किंतु तुमी तार थे के अनेक गुन बेशी दायलो तुम्हें आमदर माफ करें दावला, हमरा तोबा कुर्ची अल्लाह, हमरा नी जीवन नोटुन करे शुरू कर बो अल्लाह, आमदर ईमान बढ़िये दाव प्रति ठा दीन, आमदर आमूल सुंदर करे दाव प्रति ठा दीन, एले में साथे जुरे रखो अल्लाह, उत्तर बोस्ते तुम्हाँ की शरण करार तो फिर दान करो अल्लाह, एवं प्रत्येक टकाज तुम्हारे प्रत्येक टा हुकूम आम्रा तामिल करते पारी अल्लाह मानते पारी तुम्हारे प्रति दाई दाई तो पूरा पूरी भावे पालन करते पारी तुम्हारे बंदर प्रति दाई दाई तो जाते पूरा पूरी भावे पालन करते पारी जा किचु पालन कोरी नहीं तार बदला तुम्हीं दिए दियो अल्लाह तादेक के जाते तादेक तरामदेर माफ एवं प्रतिटा मुहूर्ते तुम्हीं आमदर के रुखा करो हेफाजत करो अल्लाह आमदर विरुद्धे ये सब शक्ति तुम्हीं खारा करो चुव अल्लाह शैताने धोखा नफ्सर तारोना रिपोर्ट तारोना शैतान दुनिया चाचिको 
এর বিরুদ্ধে আমাদেরকে রক্ষা করো এক পলকের জন্য আমাদেরকে ছেড়ে দিও না আল্লাহ এই শক্তির হাতে হাত ধরে কবর পর্যন্ত নিয়ে যেও আল্লাহ যাতে করে আমরা কলেমা সহ শয়তানের ধোকার থেকে বেঁচে দুনিয়া থেকে তোমার সন্তুষ্টি সহ যেতে পারি যখন তুমি সন্তুষ্ট থাকো তখন নিয়ে যেও আল্লাহ যাতে করে তুমি আমাদের সাথে সাক্ষাৎ করার জন্য উৎসুক থাকো আল্লাহ সেই অবস্থায় নিয়ে যেও আল্লাহ সেই আমল করার তৌফিক দিও আল্লাহ সেই ইমান দান করো আল্লাহ সেই হুসনে আখলাক দান করো আল্লাহ যাতে করে তুমি আমাদের সাথে সাক্ষাৎ করার জন্য উৎসুক থাকো আল্লাহ তোমার হাবিবের ছিটে ফোটা হলেও গুণাবলি আমাদেরকে দিও আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদের আপন করে নাও আল্লাহ তোমার রহমতের ছায়া তোলে আমাদের ঠাই দিও আল্লাহ রহমতের ছায়া তোলে আমাদের ঠাই দিও আল্লাহ তাহলে সমস্ত কঠিন কাজ সহজ হয়ে যাবে আল্লাহ আর যদি না দাও তো সবচেয়ে সহজ কাজ কঠিন থেকে যাবে আল্লাহ দুনিয়া অনেক করেছি আল্লাহ এখন তুমি আপন করে নাও আল্লাহ সাথে যাবে না আল্লাহ সাথে যা তোমার সাথে সম্পর্ক রেখে তোমাকে সামনে রেখে যা কিছু করেছি সেগুলো ছাড়া কিছুই সাথে যাবে না এগুলোর পিছনে তো সময় শেষ করে দিলাম আল্লাহ আর তো সময় নাই আমাদের আপন করে নাও আল্লাহ তোমার রহমতের ছায়া তলে আমাদের ঠাই দিও তোমার মাগফেরাত যেন আমাদের ভিড়ে থাকে তোমার হেফাজত যেন আমাদের রক্ষা করে প্রতিটা মুহূর্তে আল্লাহ আমরা বিভিন্ন নেক হাজতে হাত উঠিয়েছি তুমি অন্তর্জামি তুমি সব জানো আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদের নেক হাজত পুরা করে দাও আমাদের ঝুলি ভরে দাও আল্লাহ তোমার কাছে হাত উঠিয়েছি আর কার কাছে হাত উঠাবো আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া কি আছে আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া কোন শক্তি আছে আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া কোন অস্তিত্ব আছে যে আমাদের প্রয়োজন মিটাতে পারবে দুনিয়া এবং আখেরাতের আল্লাহ আমাদের বিভিন্ন নেক হাজত তুমি পুরা করে দিও আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ কোনো কিছু যদি ক্ষতিকর হয় পৃথিবীর জন্য তার বদলা আখেরাতে দিও আমরা বিভিন্ন বিপদ আপদে হাত উঠিয়েছি বিভিন্ন অসুখ বিষয়কের কারণে হাত উঠিয়েছি বিভিন্ন জনের অসুখ বিষয়কের কারণে হাত উঠিয়েছি তা আমাদের সন্তান সন্ততির হোক বা আত্মীয় স্বজনের হোক বা বন্ধু বান্ধবের হোক আল্লাহ বা পাড়া প্রতিবেশীর হোক বা দেশবাসীর হোক বা বিশ্ববাসীর হোক আল্লাহ আমরা কঠিন সময়ের মধ্যে দিয়ে যাব আল্লাহ একের পর এক একের পর এক আমরা তবা করছি আল্লাহ মাফ চাচ্ছি তোমার কাছে আল্লাহ আমাদেরকে আমাদেরকে ক্ষমা করো আল্লাহ মাগফেরাত তোমার মাগফেরাত যাতে পাই আল্লাহ তোমার রহমত যাতে পাই আল্লাহ তোমার হেফাজত যাতে পাই আল্লাহ তোমার হেদায়ত যাতে পাই আল্লাহ সমস্ত মুসলমানকে মাগফেরাত করো মাফ করো আল্লাহ সমস্ত মানুষকে হেদায়ত করো আল্লাহ যারা দুনিয়ার আনাচে কানাচে যে কোনো জায়গায় কষ্টের মধ্যে বিপদের মধ্যে জুলুমের মধ্যে আছে আল্লাহ তুমি তাদেরকে তুমি তাদেরকে উদ্ধার করো আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ আমাদের সন্তান সন্ততিরা তাদের সন্তান সন্ততিরা তাদের সন্তান সন্ততিরা এইভাবে কেমন পর্যন্ত যারা আসবে প্রত্যেকটা মুসলমানের সন্তান সন্ততি তাদের সন্তান সন্ততি কেমন পর্যন্ত যারা আসবে তুমি সময়কে হেদায়ত করো আল্লাহ হেদায়তের পথে রেখো আল্লাহ কাউকেও তুমি কার মধ্যে শয়তানের কোনো অংশই রেখো না আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি সবাইকে জান্নাতুল ফেরদোস দান করো আল্লাহ সবাইকে যদি তুমি বেহেস্তে দাও তোমার কোনোই ক্ষতি হবে না সবাইকে যদি সবাইকে যদি তুমি দোজকে দোজকে ফেলো তোমার কোনোই লাভ হবে না আল্লাহ রাহিমিন <laughs> আমিন <laughs> 
to be together for some time, at least once a week. May Allah accept us until, until death. Assalamu alaikum, we'll meet on Sunday. So I request all brothers to spend a little time